What's going on Taurus? How are you doing? Hope you're doing super well. This is the Autistic Mystic and this is going to be your reading for the rest of the year 2023 to close out the year. So in this reading Taurus, we're going to take a look at your overall general energy, some things you do not see coming, and also get some advice from your angels and spirit guides for you and so much more regarding the rest of the year. But before we begin this reading, as always, I do want to take a moment Taurus to let you know that you are very welcome here in this space with me as we go through this reading, and I really do appreciate you in advance for taking the time to check this reading out. Now, if this general reading does happen to resonate with you, definitely smash that like button, subscribe down below if you have not already for future updates. I would also really appreciate that over here, Taurus. But without further ado, I'm gonna pull the energy for you and we'll see what's coming your way for some messages to close out the year. As always, I would like to thank the angels, the interdimensional beings, and the spirit guides who are overseeing this act of divination for the sign of Taurus. See what we got here for you, Taurus. A lot of jumpers, which I actually like. All right. Um, the first intuitive thing coming through Taurus is there's an opportunity for you to move very quickly and to make a very quick decision before you think you're ready. Um, there's a very intuitive message Taurus coming through about, you know, you're never going to feel fully ready to make a decision. And there's something about you closing out the year. Some of you are going to be having an opportunity or something that you've been telling yourself, you know, maybe I'm going to wait till 2024 to start this thing. You have an opportunity to, to jump before you feel ready. It's like the universe is like a big bird coming into your nest and might just like kick you out before you're ready. You don't, you don't think you can fly, but once you're going down, you're just going to start flying. Um, and the reason I say that is because your opportunity is the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is an energy that doesn't really think about the long-term consequences of their dis their actions. And because that's your opportunity, I think you're sitting on a great idea, a great idea or a great opportunity that you really want to make sure you don't miss. That's the, just the first thing I get. Okay, what it's about, we'll have to clarify and see. But before we get into the tarot, let's go ahead and start this reading off with some pre-shuffled oracle cards from the universe. And uh, these are the energies that spirit wants you to focus on right now as we close out the year, Taurus. And you have the sun, Chiron, and the 10th house energy. These are the areas spirit wants you to focus on. So the first thing coming through is, you know, healing and your identity. Some of you are going to be healing a wound to your core identity, who your sense of self, you know, the sun represents your life force energy, the essence of your soul, who you believe yourself to be. And Chiron represents core wounds, but also, you know, the potential to be a very good healer. So some of you Tauruses out there, spirit is advising you to put your healing talents to use. Okay. And look at it as a benefit for others of you though. This is about shifting your self image. Okay, because um, one of the most powerful things I've ever done is, you know, don't rely on what society tells you you are. You know, never allow society or people around you to, voice, to, to shape your own identity. Some of you may have allow, allowed wounded people to kind of project, dump onto you a lot of crappy belief systems that you've unconsciously taken on, you know, because you may be loyal to these people, etc. So... There's also something about being vulnerable with your wounding around career. This is an intuitive message, Taurus, that people want real, raw wisdom because Chiron is the wounded healer. It represents the maverick, but also a healer. So people don't want BS surface level things anymore in terms of connection with career. You know, 
you, some of you are going to be facing a wound around career and, and how your identity, your sense of self is holding you back in career. But for others of you, Taurus, to close out the year, um, the message is not to be afraid to, to, to really put those uh, healing, healing arts into practice with your career. Some of you are going to be really good at that. So, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and get into the tarot. Like I said, your opportunity is the Knight of Swords. Um, your challenge is the Ten of Wands. So there, I feel like there's an opportunity coming up that's full of passion is what it feels like. But once again, you're holding on to this idea that there's something that's too much too soon. You know, your challenge may be telling yourself, oh my God, I could not possibly take on this opportunity because the workload is going to be too heavy. You know, the workload is simply going to be too heavy. But I really feel like the question to ask yourself is this, is this decision that is this opportunity that I have to close out the year going into the new year going to align me with my long-term goals or not? Because a lot of you right now are, are worried about BS problems with this opportunity. For some of you, this could be very well a love opportunity. For others of you, it's going to be more so to do with career, okay, and, and being a healer of some sort or just healing your career in general. But um, there's this idea of, you know, a burden you know, this is too much in your challenge, but I kind of think it's a BS. Like, I think this is something you're meant to push through, Taurus, and really take on a lot at this time. Um, but okay, let's, to your overall general energy, it's interesting. You have the Eight of Wands in reverse, the Six of Swords, and also the Chariot. You know, the Eight of Wands in reverse is all about too much speed too much open communication, too much changes, everything is up in the air. You know, Taurus might not feel comfortable with everything being so airy-fairy right now. And the chariot also represents speed, movement, freedom of movement, and moving forward, taking a big leap, and you're also spiritually protected to make, it, to make a leap here. The six of swords has to do with moving on from a crappy situation, but it also could indicate physical travel. Whenever you see the six of swords with the chariot, it could indicate a journey, that is on your mind or something that you actually do. With the Eight of Wands in reverse, there could be miscommunication about a certain opportunity that requires someone to move towards you or to, to move your physical location. And if it's not to do with that, it's just a, a, a choice that's gonna open up, that's gonna change your timeline, Taurus. So I don't know what this is about, we're gonna have to see. When it comes to what you don't see coming, I feel like you're going to be under the pressure cooker of a financial thing that you've been waiting on, that you've been telling yourself you're not ready. But I think right now, as we enter into the year, something that you're telling yourself, oh, I still have to learn the basics. I still have to, you know, go through an apprenticeship here. I feel like you're ready because in what you don't see coming, you have the three of wands, the queen of pentacles and the two of swords. So in what you don't see coming, there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of doubt to a new physical thing, you know, whatever this opportunity is, you know, for some of you, it could be closing out something as well, because um, there could be a very fast closeout, right? Something could go awry um, in your financial or work decision, and it just seems so fast out of nowhere. But for a lot of you, I feel like it's more so this idea of, you know, something that you've been sitting on, or, or finally an opportunity opens up having to do with an idea or some sort of project in your head. So I don't know, let's go ahead um, and start clarifying this reading for us to really make sense of it. Um, okay, let's clarify the Knight of Swords in your opportunity. Yeah, judgment. You also have judgment in your advice. You know what's crazy, Taurus? I'm actually so stupid because I didn't even show your advice. I jumped right into um, jumped right into the clarification. I'm not being present enough. Sorry. So here's the thing. In your advice, you have the judgment card, the Queen of Swords, and the Ten of Pentacles, Taurus. So there's a judgment about your legacy, and the Ten of Pentacles is very similar to the Tenth House in you know, your Oracle card message. And there's a clear decision, you know, the Queen of Swords is about making a rational, you know, perhaps emotionally detached decision. Is this thing that I have opening up for me? Because something's opening up or closing out that's going to feel fast. The, the end of the year, maybe you thought it was going to be more stable, but there's something that's, you're either, you know, you're going to do this or you're not. Um, but there, there has to be a logical decision about this, Taurus. You have the Judgment card, which is a major shift in consciousness here. And the funny thing is, is that when I clarified the Knight of Swords, 
the judgment card also came out. So your opportunity is the judgment card and your advice is the judgment card. The judgment card has to do with using your intuition to using your intuition to discern well. Judgment is the ability to discern well, you know, to know good from bad, right from wrong in a logical way, not in a way that's like emotional. You know, judgment, it's like you get a download and you just know what to do type of thing. So I feel like there's a quick decision you're going to regret. This whole reading, uh, Taurus, is like there's a quick decision you need to act on that you may regret not acting on, okay? And some of you are going to get the judgment and in what you don't see coming, you're still going to wait, you know, and this is why this is coming up for you. And I don't think you're going to, this is not that happy of a frequency. Many of you are going to miss a financial opportunity. And for some of you, it's not going to be so obvious. This has to be a shift in consciousness that opens up avenues that are already existing. You know, people get the law of attraction wrong when they're like, I need to basically attract things to me. I need to think of it and then it will come to me. I, I will attract this experience. That's not how it works. You shift your frequency and you literally shift into different parallel realities. It's not that you attract everything. You just like shift, like almost like changing a TV channel. You just shift to a new episode of your life. And so there could be something right in front of your face, an opportunity you know, an opportunity having to do with Chiron, your biggest wounding, either looking at how that's getting in the, in the way of you moving forward. Because remember, when it comes to the sun, that is your soul. That is always protected. The psyche can be wounded. The physical body can be wounded. The emotions can be wounded. The connection to your soul can be wounded, but your true self can never be wounded. Waters cannot wet it. Fires cannot burn it. Armies cannot destroy it. So some of you are thinking, oh, I don't have what it takes, you know, the wounded self. I just don't have the energy. If you tap into infinite energy, which is the sun, you can move through any wound. So I don't know why I just channeled that, but I did. All right. Um, let's go ahead and clarify with the 10 of wands is your challenge, Taurus. <laughs> Yeah, this is something to do. The Queen of Pentacles are right next to each other now. The Ten of Wands is clarified by the Queen of Pentacles, Taurus. Okay, so this is some sort of work opportunity. For some of you, it's going to be about having the discernment to let go of a career that is out of alignment with you at this time and moving into 2024 with maybe less security than ever before because your opportunity is, you know, maybe it's better anywhere else than here anywhere else than this crappy thing where I'm not actually expanding. Because any sort of work that you take on should always be expansive. You should never ever be in a situation that's like, I'm just doing this crappy thing. I hate the ideals of this company. You can go work and it's better to make less money and be like an assistant at a company whose values you believe in, right? So I feel like for a lot of you, there's this big change in your work where like, I'm doing anything I can to do something that I believe in that activates my soul rather than some sort of soul-crushing experience based on a wound you're taking on to your self-image that's just not really letting you perceive of the opportunities that are actually always right in front of your face. It's not that you have to attract your biggest career from Australia CEO is going to see you. No, it's not how it works. There's literally all these opportunities. And I just feel like you're actually capable of making a big change in your career that feels heavy. Oh my God, I'm actually going to do this. For others of you though, Taurus, with this being your challenge, um, there is this idea of taking on a lot of responsibility that you're telling yourself, oh, I can't do that. Trust me, you're going to stress yourself out more by not taking on more responsibility in career. And that's going to look different for others of you. If you've been sitting in something that sucks, not aligned with your soul, then taking responsibility means, okay, I'm going to remove myself. But for most of you, it's like you could be starting a side hustle. You have one thing going on and then like, this idea that you're sitting on is just not going. In 2024, it's time to like unleash whatever you whatever thing is coming up for you because clearly a big thing is. So um, with that being said, Taurus, let us now, let's clarify why um, the chariot is here because I feel like this is going to be emblematic of the six of swords, eight of wands, kind of like movement. Why is the chariot here? You're definitely divinely protected amidst chaotic travel, amidst chaotic communication. You're divinely protected. If you're in an argument with someone over work or if you're in a stressful situation, the chariot is here. Like you're, you're designed for this 
active horsemanship, whatever you got going on that's like quick and movement filled this week. <laughs> the chariot is clarified by the eight of cups, the world and the three of swords and your overall general energy. So you're divinely protected to move on from, from any sort of toxic heartbreak situation, any sort of painful thing here, and you're really overdue for an upgrade, right? This is the idea of Chiron, 10th house, and the sun as well, is you're moving away from your pain as holding you back in a negative state of depression, and you'll start to realize that whatever pain you've been through, you could be sitting there with chopped off arms, you know, like Stephen Hawking, you can't even move your body. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It's time now to, instead of getting depressed about your wounding or what makes you different or what is holding you back, image, you know, whatever, people's opinions, if you're whatever, Taurus, it's time to look at this as an asset, as a blessing, as an up, how can you use this to upgrade your life? You know, this is what I've done with the autistic mystic. Instead of trying to like, huh, float around to this job, act all typical like hide my true self oh like never worked out was always just in a horrible situation i just started to sink into my true self and value it as unique and that's what you need to do here as well in some sort of way but there's also this idea of just like a quick decision that you need to make that you don't feel ready for yet but in your advice it's telling you you don't have to worry about this is the mantra that i want to leave you with don't worry about is this is this the right decision is the is this the wrong decision should I do this should I do that what are the consequences of this what are the consequences of that the only thing you have to focus on this week Taurus is will this decision line me bring me closer to my long term legacy goals my long term goals where my ten year plan plus will it align me more with this or no that's all you got to worry about okay that's all you got to worry about and sometimes when it comes to lining yourself up with your legacy, you have to take an evolutionary leap in your consciousness with your rational mind to potentially recreate yourself, right? This is about changing your mindset in your advice. The judgment card to the queen of swords, how is your thinking influencing your legacy? Because the soul is dyed with the color of your own thoughts. Your aura, what you believe about yourself reeks off of you. You don't need no one needs to hear your words, right? This reality is an inner game. If you get the inside right, the, the outside reality has no has no choice but to like basically submit to your will. It's basically like this, Taurus, is what I'm going to leave you with here. There's like three different paths that people take in life. There's one rare path that people can learn how to do when they integrate themselves spiritually. Let me, let me lay out the three paths that you have in front of you. Let Now, I want you to visualize yourself on a little raggedy boat approaching an island, a very small island in a very tropical environment full of natives to the island who look very angry and they're like chanting and yelling as you're approaching the island on this raggedy boat. You have no weapons, nothing to defend yourself. The first thing you can do, when the first lifeline, the parallel reality that exists is you just say, begging as you're as the boat's approaching you're begging please don't hurt me oh my god no i'm so sorry guilt you know submitting oh my god no 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 in which case you're probably going to get destroyed and messed up the second lifeline is you're going to become the fighter and you're going to try to like fight them and you're just outnumbered and they're savage and you're going to die the third lifeline and this is where i lose a lot of you but this is how it works and it's easier than you think and this reality is not what you think it is the third lifeline that I want you to shift into when it makes, comes to any decision is you're approaching the island on the boat and you just like lay out your hand like this as if you're like literally an alien uh, ascended master or like just like a, literally like just something like it breaks the, the typical script of normal human behavior and it elevates your consciousness and you do something like a third option. But in this case, I'm giving like you a spiritual... Like, of just what if you just approach and you just laid out your hand like this? The natives may just be like, oh, get curious. Who the hell is this? Why are they not afraid? Why are they not trying to fight? Or why are they not trying to, you know, beg for mercy? And in life, many people beg for mercy or they try to fight their destiny. They try to fight where they're forward. They try to, or they have a crappy identity. They try to go the guilt, you know, victim path. Or there's a third option where you just literally select the parallel reality of your choice with your free will because what you have in this life is free will. 
that's your gift from the universe, everything's neutral, and you just choose your destiny or you choose any sort of decision, I'm gonna do this and it's gonna go successful, not fighting it, not begging for it, but just a neutral third option, that's what's gonna really help you here. Because this upgrade, has to do with the third option. I feel like it's like the middle way of finding balance between polarity, like black and white, good, bad. You have to be in the middle of like some sort of gray area when it comes to your life and like in order to actually maneuver properly here. Because if you have black and white thinking, going into cognitive dissonance, oh, good, bad, there is no such thing as good, bad, right, wrong. All there is is soul alignment or misalignment. But with that being said, I'm going to conclude this reading, Taurus, and I hope that you have a great rest of the